Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out today and uh, and do a second take on a video I had done a couple days ago and I took that video down just because it went on too long and I feel the message was really important and I wanted to do a better job of summarizing the information. Okay, so that's what I am doing now. Uh, the dream I was given about three nights ago, I believe has a very important message in it for God's people. And I was given a revelation later that evening through uh, a movie that I had come across. And I believe that all of it ties together. So I wanna share all that and uh, do it a little quicker in this video. Okay, so in the dream I was given a few nights ago, I was above this body of water looking down and I could see several orca whales in the water. And as I was watching them, I noticed that the orcas were zeroing in on a couple of the whales and they were just literally devouring them. They were tearing them apart. It was really bad. And so I noticed that there was a laboratory, some type of a science laboratory to the right of the water where these, these orcas were gathered. And as soon as I saw the lab, I was in it. And immediately I knew that that lab was one of the orcas that was under attack. So there was a main scientist in the lab with me and another worker. And as I looked across the room, I saw this escape vessel, okay? So it was like a lifeboat, you know, on a big ship, there would be a small lifeboat. If the, if the whole boat was gonna, the ship was gonna sink, people would get in the lifeboat. Well, this vessel was like that. And so the laboratory I knew was about to go under, so we, me and the other worker got into this escape vessel. And my main concern when we got in was that it was properly sealed. And I was looking up at the side of it just to make sure that it was sealed properly. That was what I was most focused on. I believe that those orca whales are symbolic of people groups. And the water we know from the book of Revelation where the apostle John saw the beast coming about of the seas and then the book of Daniel where Daniel saw the same thing. The seas were defined as uh, peoples of the earth. So I believe that the, the sea and those orcas, this is the peoples of the earth and the orcas are people groups. And what I was observing was that they were devouring one another, biting at each other. And I believe that the Father is showing us through that vision and that dream what's happening right now in this world with various people groups just devouring each other, attacking each other. And I was reminded of a scripture from Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. The Apostle Paul says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Now, that's exactly what the enemy wants, folks. He wants people to turn against people. And in that dream, I was actually kind of astounded that these orcas were attacking each other, their own kind. But th this is what's happening. Human beings attacking human beings. But as the church, it's important for us to turn to the Word of God. We always use the Word of God as our litmus test for what is right and what is wrong, what is evil, what is good. There are no sides, okay? There is only good and there is evil. And as Christians, we align ourselves with the Word of God. All right, now, we know the heart of God because the Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, that is the heart of God church, that every human being on the face of the earth, no matter what color, no matter what race, would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that every one of them would be born again of the Holy Spirit and receive eternal life in Christ Jesus. All right, that is his will. 
So if we are pitting ourselves against any people group, all right, then we are actually going against the word of God. We have to have a heart to, to reach out to all the peoples of the earth and, and lead them to Jesus. That's our commission. That's our great commission. And that's what we're here for. And it's important for us to keep that focus, church, because the enemy is trying to distract us on every front. He is attacking and we have to be, we have to be careful to stay focused on the Lord and, and in his word and, and in him. We have to stay hidden in Christ, church, if we are going to be bringing forth any good fruit in this world. All right, now the second thing is the uh, escape vessel. We know that escape vessel is symbolic of the pre-tribulation church rapture and that uh, Jesus said, Pray always that you're counted worthy to escape all that's coming upon this earth. And there is only one thing that qualifies us for that church, and that is to be born again of the Holy Spirit, to be sealed in him. And that happens the moment we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior in accordance with Romans 10, 9 and 10, the plan of salvation. Uh, which I have gone over many times, is a two-sided coin. In, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, Paul tells us, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, confess being to concede or agree, Lord being giving someone deciding power over your life. If you agree to give Jesus deciding power over your life and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, trust in his shed blood to cover your sins, Paul said, you will be saved. He said, for it is with your heart you believe and are justified, Okay, the blood of Jesus justifies us, but he said it's with your mouth you confess and are saved. So it's that part where we give Jesus deciding power over our lives, where we ask him to be Lord of our lives, that we're saved. Now, in, in the vessel, the escape vessel, my concern was the seal, all right, that it was properly sealed. And that evening, uh, the Lord, I believe, divinely led me to... Uh, it's a movie that's more like a documentary about the Space Shuttle Challenger, what happened back in 1986. And as I watched what happened, I began to realize the connection Holy Spirit was making. And I'm just going to read what I wrote to a few friends concerning this movie and, and this dream that I had. I said, with reference to my concern regarding the seal on the escape vessel, I believe I was divinely led to a movie on Pure Flix. It was a true story based on the 1986 disaster of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Now I've known for quite some time that John Paul Jackson was shown what was going to happen that day and he had contacted NASA and warned them. Of course he was written off. But what I did not know is that many of the rocket scientists, namely Adam, who worked for the company that literally built the Space Shuttle warned NASA not to launch the space shuttle that morning. It all came down to a seal. Yep, a simple seal. The rocket scientists warned NASA that because of the low temperature, 31 degrees, the morning NASA intended to launch, there was a good chance that the second seal would be compromised. Rubber is less flexible and cold, resulting in rocket fuel burning the side of the rocket and causing a disaster. Clearly, the team of rocket scientists were correct, but sadly, they took a back seat to the executive management who overrode the engineer's recommendation and approved the launch. The rest is history. But it all came down to a simple rubber seal that was compromised by the cold temperature. Now, this is where Holy Spirit began to really connect the dream to, to this incident. Something the church is overlooking today. Jesus prophesied this, the hearts of many would grow cold. The hearts of many having grown cold will result in a disaster of all disasters for many. Because they were not truly sealed by Holy Spirit, their expected escape is compromised. It genuinely underlines why many will not make the rapture while driving home what things will look like for those who don't, a colossal disaster. And this just comes down to where I believe many people are at. They have parroted a prayer. They believe that because they prayed a prayer when they were 12 years old, that they are good to go, right? And that's what many are being told by false teachers. And their hearts have grown cold toward the truth. And so they're not hearing Holy Spirit tugging at their hearts 
to, to follow Jesus, to come into that surrendered walk with him, to be born again, to be sealed by the Holy Spirit. And so we have many people today, I believe, who are uh, in a compromised state, just like the Space Shuttle Challenger. And I am putting these warnings out because I believe that the Father wants people to hear the truth. Now, one thing that the Holy Spirit also drove home that night was that uh, Adam, the one main scientist, he kept saying as he would lay out his case, but I'm right, I'm right but I'm right. And he would tell his theory and he'd say, but I'm right. And then at the end, when the space shuttle did explode and he was very upset and his wife was telling him, but you were right. And then it occurred to Adam that it didn't matter that he was right because nobody listened to his warning. Nobody heeded it. Church, this is where prayer comes in. All right. As I told my friends, we can be right until the cows come home, but if people don't have ears to hear, they are going to end up in a colossal disaster. We have to pray, church, that people have ears to hear. Jesus often made the statement, he who has an ear, let him hear, indicating not everybody has an ear to hear spiritual things and to discern spiritual matters. Pray for the people to have ears to hear so that they can respond to the Holy Spirit's tugging on their heart to get into that place of safety with the Lord where they're truly born again and sealed and ready for takeoff. And just in summary, church, let's remember that we do not want to be a part of any group that is biting and devouring at other members of mankind. We need to align ourselves with the heart of the Father, with the Word of God, that we walk in love. Love for the Lord and love for one another, all peoples. Love for all peoples. And we need to ensure that we ourselves and all of our loved ones are properly sealed in Holy Spirit, that we've truly been born again, that we are following Jesus. Jesus said, if someone does not take up their cross and follow him, they are not worthy of him. We must ensure we're following Jesus. And lastly, just be careful uh, when you're sharing truth, be sure that you're praying over those people to hear the truth, to be ha to have ears to hear. Pray for Holy Spirit to open the ears of your loved ones, your neighbors, your coworkers, so that they can hear the truth. They can hear the warnings and respond to them. Because if they can't hear them, all the warnings are for naught. All right. I hope, I pray, church, that you'll take all this to the Lord in prayer. And as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.